Is Ben here? We're good? All right. Good, good morning, everyone. And welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. Uh, my name is Jimmy Van Bramer, and I'm chairing the committee today at the request of Councilmember Jalissa Ferreres Copeland. Today, we will, but before I, I uh, say what we're going to be voting on, I want to introduce the colleagues who are with us. Uh, Minority Leader Matteo is with us, Councilmember Levine, Councilmember Kalos, Councilmember Vaca, Councilmember Rodriguez, Councilmember Gibson, and Councilmember Rosenthal. I believe that's all the members who are here uh, today. Uh, we will be voting on three items this morning, a transparency resolution, a bid item, and proposed intro 1176A to require OMB to provide budget documents in a machine-readable format. In addition, we'll be holding a public hearing on intro 1737 to establish the Morris Park bid. Let's start with the transparency resolution that sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation, I know, of certain organizations rece I got receiving local, aging, and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. Organizations appearing in the resolution that have not yet completed the pre-qualification process conducted by the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Council, or another entity are identified in the attached charts with an asterisk. As with all transparency resolutions, council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with the proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Rowan Grant from the General Counsel's Office is here and can assist you with any questions or concerns regarding disclosures. Next, we have intro 1698, which would authorize 11 existing bids throughout the city to increase the amounts they expend annually. The budget increases have been requested by the property owners within the boundaries of each bid and would be used to enhance the services provided. The details about which bids would see increases and the amounts sought are set forth in the briefing documents prepared by the finance staff. The last item we will be voting on is proposed intro 1176A, sponsored by Councilmember Kalos. This legislation would require OMB to submit the preliminary and executive budgets to the Council in machine-readable formats such as Excel. In addition, it would require that within 10 days of posting a budget document on its website, OMB must post the data in the document on its website and on the open data portal in a machine-readable format. In 2017, having budget documents publicly available in sortable and searchable formats should be a no-brainer. I applaud Councilmember Kalos on his leadership and persistence on this issue. A transparent government is a better government, and this bill ensures that the budget process will be more open and accessible to all. Now, I'd like to ask Councilmember Kalos to say a few words on this bill. Thank you, Majority Leader and today's Finance Chair Van Bramer. New York City has an $85 billion budget. The Council and the public deserve to know how every single penny of that $85 billion is being spent. While most budget documents are posted online by the Office of Management and Budget, they are really hard to read. Most of these documents are submitted in portable document format, PDFs, which make it diff difficult for anyone, even our own finance teams, to sort through because PDFs cannot be analyzed in a spreadsheet or even searched. Introduction 1176A requires that when the mayor submits a budget document to the council and the public that we get them in human or something that anyone can read and machine readable formats and that when the Office of Management and Budget posts a budget document to its website within 10 days they also post it to the open data portal in a usable format and either repost it on their website or simply link to it on the open data portal. Additionally, this legislation cleans up some outmoded language in the law. When is the last time any of you saw a floppy disk? Uh, 
currently, and the, the quick answer to that is created in 1982, the three and a half inch floppy disk stopped being sold in uh, 2007 and Sony stopped making them in 2010. This floppy disk is courtesy of the city council's IT division and it was created in 2002. Uh, and so under the current law, the Office of Management Budget is required to give us the budget documents on these. And I can tell you for a fact that in the three and a half years that I've been a council member, the Office of Management and Budget has not delivered the budget on these floppy disks uh, or on a CD-ROM as required. Uh, so this would actually just say we're going to join the 21st century, uh, we're going to put these documents online and we're going to put them in formats that people uh, can use. I want to just take a moment to thank our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, and our finance chair, Jalissa Ferreras. Uh, we've worked together with the finance team and Dean Fulahan at the Office of Management and Budget as well as uh, CGI and the folks who are the folks behind the city's financial management system to ensure that this was technologically possible. Get it online and in fact you can actually see most parts of the budget online on the city's open data portal but not everything and we still need every single penny. And I want to thank uh, Latanya McKinney, Rebecca Chase and Eric Bernstein, John Russell, John Seltzer and my legislative director, Paul Westrick. Uh, it took a lot of hard work on everyone's part to make this happen and hopefully we'll get more online soon. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilmember Kalos. Lastly, we are holding a public hearing on intro 1737, which would establish the Morris Park Business Improvement District in Councilmember Vaca's district in the Bronx. On October 17th, this committee voted on Resolution 1679 to set today as the hearing date to hear from individuals who may be affected by the proposed establishment of the Morris Park bid. The bid would be located along Morris Park Avenue in the Morris Park neighborhood of the Bronx and consist of 188 properties. The area is a low-density, pedestrian-friendly commercial corridor which provides neighborhood-scale retail services and entertainment. The annual $390,000 budget of the bid would provide services related to maintenance and sanitation, marketing and special events, administration and advocacy, beautification and public safety. First, we will hear from any witnesses who wish to testify. Once we have heard any testimony, we will then adjourn the hearing for at least 30 days to allow any property owner within the proposed area of the bid to file an objection to the establishment of the bid with the city clerk. In the absence of objections, filed either by a majority of all impacted property owners or by property owners owning a majority of the assessed value of the property within the proposed bid, the committee and the full council may adopt the legislation establishing the Morris Park bid. In order to do so, the committee and the full council must be prepared to answer the following four questions in the affirmative. Were all notices of the hearing for all hearings required to be held, published and mailed as required by law and otherwise sufficient? Two, does all the real property within the proposed district boundaries benefit from the establishment of the district except as otherwise provided by law? Three, is all real property benefited by the establishment of the district included within the proposed district? And four, is the establishment of the district in the best interest of the public? If the committee and full council finds in the affirmative on these four questions and the number of objections required to prevent the establishment of the bid are not filed, then the legislation can be adopted. Now I'd like to call on Councilmember Vacher to speak on this very important matter. Thank you very much. And I want to urge the council to pass the Morris Park bid. The merchants here have worked very hard to get the word out about how bids can really improve a community. And I know that this is the 75th bid in New York City, and I want to thank the mayor's office, and I want to thank SBS for their hard work because I wanted this very much to be done during my term in office. Uh, anyone who knows Morris Park knows that it's one of our most vital shopping centers in the borough. We have mom and pop stores that predominate the entire stretch, and these merchants are concerned about attract, attracting pedestrians to the restaurants and to the other stores, and they're concerned about the overall, of qual overall quality of life in that community, which is one of the finest communities in the borough. So again, with thanks to all, especially to the merchants, 
to the Westchester Square bid that gave technical assistance to the uh, merchants here. Uh, I want to thank my office for the work that they did to uh, assist, and again to the mayor's office and SBS. But I would certainly urge the committee to vote yes. Thank you very much, Councilmember Vaca. Now, representatives from the Department of Small Business Services are here to provide testimony on the Morris Park bid, uh, and we also have some folks from the Morris Park Business Improvement District itself. I'm going to call all three of you up together on the same panel. Chris Goddard, the Assistant Commissioner of SBS, uh, William Padone, and John Bonizio, uh, both of the Morris Park uh, uh, Improvement District and Bid Committee. And you will be sworn in um, at this moment. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the committee today and to respond honestly to council member questions? I do. I do. Great. Um, Chris, do you want to start? Thank you. Uh, good morning, Majority Leader Van Bramer and members of the Finance Committee. I'm Chris Goddard, Assistant Commissioner of Neighborhood Development at the Department of Small Business Services. I'm joined here by our Senior Program Manager for Bid Development, Lamel Lindsay. Uh, we are here to testify in support of the proposed Morris Park Business Improvement District. At SBS, we are focused, um, we are working hard to open doors for New Yorkers across the five boroughs, focusing on creating stronger businesses, connecting New Yorkers to good jobs, and fostering thriving neighborhoods. We believe that the vitality of the city's commercial corridors is a key part of achieving this goal, and bids have been valuable and proven partners in revitalization and economic development across all five boroughs. In addition to our role overseeing and supporting the city's existing network of 74 bids, SBS also supervises bid formation and expansion process, serving as an advisor and resource for communities interested in developing or expanding bids. We are careful to ensure that each steering committee we work with adheres to our planning process and policies, solicits robust community improvement or input, and performs extensive outreach to collect and demonstrate broad-based support across all stakeholder groups. Moreover, we are cognizant that the unique nature of each community that we assist um, and aim to empower local stakeholders to make determinations on proposed services, boundaries, and budget size that best suit their community's needs, appetite, and ability to pay assessments. While we always impart strong planning principles and share our data and best practices from across the bid network when working with any bid formation effort, we recognize that the power and effectiveness of bids rests in their unmatched understanding of local needs and issues. Like other recent bid formations that SBS has overseen, the Morris Park formation effort involved numerous meetings and consultations with local stakeholders throughout the planning and outreach phases. After extensive outreach effort and close coordination with all key parties, SBS determined that the documented support among all stakeholder groups, including over 50% of the area's total assessed value providing written support and favor, was in fact sufficient to submit the application. As required by law, the Morris Park uh, Steering Committee mailed the summary of the City Council resolution no later than 10 days and no more than 30 days before today's hearing to the following parties. To each owner of real, rec of real property within the proposed district at the address shown on the latest city assessment roll, to such other persons as are registered with the city to receive tax bills concerning real property within the district, and to tenants of each building within the proposed district. Furthermore, SBS arranged for the publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the city record. I'd like to acknowledge and thank Councilmember Vaca for his ongoing support of this effort. I'd also like to thank Councilmember Torres for his support. Sure. Lastly, I'd like to acknowledge that representatives of the bid formation effort and steering committee are here and present today to testify and address any specific questions that I'm unable to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. And who would like to go first? prospects moving forward. My name is William Padone, and I am the current Morris Park Business Improvement District St Steering Committee Chairman. I've been the chairman for a little over two years. I would like to give you a little history. In late 2007, early 2008, we began discussing the potential for a business improvement district in the Morris Park corridor of the Bronx. That discussion was taken up by Councilman James Vaca and the now defunct Morris Park Alliance. 
The momentum went nowhere, but in about 2011, momentum picked up again for the rebuilding of the Morris Park Corridor. The steering committee reached out to all property owners, commercial tenants, and residents to discuss the potential for a bid. In 2015, we were provided with additional staffing and funding from Councilman Backer's office. A strong outreach was done and surveys were taken. The stakeholders decided on five key services, sanitation, branding, marketing, retail attraction, and beautification, and then a budget was established. See, our area is a middle-class area. My family has been there since the late 1800s, three, potentially four generations. We've seen the good, the bad, and the not so good, or the ugly. Our collective goal is to improve safety, improve appearance, develop better infrastructure, and home ownership. Right now, we're not on the city's radar, but the city has a lot on their hands, and we're here to work with the city to join forces to help Morris Park keep its charm while keeping up with the times. Thank you. Thank you. John? Thank you. Good morning, members of the committee. Uh, the Morris Park Bid Steering Committee was formed in 2013 on the coattails of the successful bid development effort undertaken in Westchester Square. The sponsoring organization at the time was the Morris Park Alliance, a volunteer merchant association that gathered a group of approximately 31 commercial property owners, commercial tenants, area residents, and community leaders to begin the development process. Supported by a grant from Council Member James Vacca, the Bronx Chamber of Commerce was enlisted to assist in organization and outreach efforts. The passage of time witnessed the disbanding of the Alliance when its leaders retired, moved away, or fell victim to the demands of business. In a turn of events that speaks loudly of the dedication of the area's stakeholders, the Morris Park Community Association, a 40-year-old resident organization, assumed the role of sponsor. The Chamber was succeeded by the Neighborhood Initiatives Development Corporation and then eventually by the Westchester Square bid to restart outreach efforts and wrap up the loose ends of the project. During the Chamber's tenure, a survey was undertaken of property owners, merchants, residents, and consumers, and the results of the survey uncovered a strong need for a business plan for the business district, the engagement of a paid ombudsman to guide area advocacy, the establishment and promotion of a strong district image, an increase in consumer foot traffic, graffiti cleanup, and the maintenance of a safe community environment. Based on the survey, a plan was established as will provided that includes a full-time executive director to oversee program services, that includes sanitation, a comprehensive marketing plan, a streetscape program, a branding initiative, and collaboration with and support of the existing civilian safety patrol run by the Community Association. A budget of $390,000 was adopted, approximately 75% of which is dedicated to these program efforts. The committee also plans to undertake additional commercial development efforts once the bid is established, with funding and resources from local anchors just outside the bid district, and by taking advantage of grant programs available in the community. Outreach for the effort was extensive and included the execution of multiple mailings to all the stakeholders, presentations at community board meetings, community association meetings, and merchant gatherings, and in hundreds of one-on-one -on -one conversations with home, business, and commercial property owners. In addition, two public hearings were held in the district so stakeholders could question board members and employees of other established bids, employees of the Department of Small Business Services, and local elected officials. Statement of support well, statements of support were collected by the outreach team to document support. The committee considered several formulas for the equitable establishment of assessment fees to pay for the plan. These included formulas based on assessed property value, square footage, front footage, building structure, etc., and combinations of these factors. Based on the low-density environment in the district, a front footage formula was adopted for commercial and mixed-use properties with an additional $300 per year for corner properties and commercial use above the first floor. Vacant lots are assessed at $300 per year. Vacant lots on corners are assessed an additional $300 for the corner. Residential properties occupied for residential use are assessed at $1 per year, and government and not-for-profit owned and operated properties are exempt from assessment. Um, 
I have I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Any Thank members. you very much, and congratulations uh, to you all and to uh, Councilmember Vaca. Uh, are there any questions uh, for this panel from any of the members of the committee? Uh, seeing none, and if we have quorum, uh, I believe we do. Uh, I want to recognize, first of all, we've been joined by Councilmember Janique Miller uh, from Queens, and then I would ask uh, Billy Martin, committee clerk, to call the roll. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Finance. Items are coupled. Council Member Van Bramer. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Congratulations to my colleague, Council Member Vaca, and, and to the leaders of this new bid. As someone that also have a bid at 181st in my district, and now working to create two new business improvement districts, one in the south of 178, another one in the Inwood area area that we are looking for resorting. We know how important is the bid for especially a small business. Congratulations. Thank you. Gibson. With my warmest congratulations to Councilmember Vaca and the Morris Park community from your colleague on the west side of the Bronx, I want to congratulate you. Uh, this is certainly a great opportunity to uh, improve economic development, create jobs, and create an incredible business sector in Morris Park that I'm already familiar with, but I know will continue to get better and better. So congratulations, colleague, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levine. Adding my congratulations to our colleague, Council Member Vaca, I vote aye. Miller. I vote aye. Rosenthal. With congratulations to my colleague, Council Member Vaca, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Matteo. Aye. I vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items have been adopted on today's finance agenda. Great. Uh, we will be keeping the vote open for 15 minutes for other colleagues who may be joining us. Uh, congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council.